welcome people to Conversations with S.D. Booker. I got a special, special, special guest with me today, Mr. Terrence Lee of the Introvert Leader. He's with me. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, great. How about you? I'm doing great, I can't complain. Well, man, it's an honor for you to join me. Um, I'll give the people a little background on how I came across you. I came across you on IG. And I, I believe a guy I grew up with uh, was sharing your stuff, I believe, that's how I came across. Uh, so okay. I read it and I was like, wow, you know, the your, your, your handle kind of <laughs> caught me off guard, drew my attention, but your content did also, did, did as well. So I was like, wow, introvert leader. And then I was reading the content and then I said, well, man, let me go to this guy's page. And I was just reading through and listening to some of the, the videos. I was like, man, this guy is speaking to me, <laughs> you know, like, you know, so I'm an introvert. And so listening to your content, I was like, wow, you know, this is something that isn't really addressed or uh, a deep dive is done into. And uh, you really do a deep dive and give some clarity of what an introvert is and uh, the challenges and the blessings uh, that uh, are bestowed upon us. So uh, we'll get started. But first off, I want to know, who is Terrence Lee? Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. And, you know, and before I get started, I just want to thank you again for, for having me on the platform. Um, I've got to check out, you know, some of your content as well. And Definitely love what you're doing. So it's an honor to, you know, to, to be talking to you. So, um, yeah, so I mean, my background, uh, I grew up uh, moving around quite a bit. I uh, was born in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we then moved to the Dallas area. We then moved to Northern California, then Southern California, then uh, upstate Rochester, New York, and then back down to Dallas. So uh, needless to say, I was one of those kids that grew up uh, kind of being the new kid in school, you know, I was, I was used to that situation. And, um, you know, there's something that happened when I was in middle school, when I was, when we were up in Rochester and, um, it, it really damaged a lot of my confidence. It was a situation with a particular, uh, teacher. Um, and prior to that, you know, I was, I was pretty outgoing, I would say. Um, and I think that that was kind of a turning point for me. Um, and this was in seventh grade. So I was 13 years old. Um, okay. So at that time, you know, prior to that, I used to be the kid that when there was a question in class, I'd be the first to raise my hand, right? I'd be the one going to the board, doing all of that. And after this situation, uh, it was really the exact opposite. And so, um, you know, fast forward through uh, the rest of middle school, through high school, um, I was one of those kids that I, I had friends, you know, I had my uh, people I ran with and everything, but I was always kind of described as like quiet or reserved, or if it was like a big group of people, I'd be the one kind of, you know, a little bit to myself. Right. Um, and so, you know, for a long time, I, I struggled with that. You know, I was like, is there something wrong with me? You know, why am I not one of the more loud guys in the group, the one that's, you know, more talkative, things like that. Uh, and that continued into college, you know, so I went to Florida A&M, uh, majored in electrical engineering there. And, uh, you know, and I had my friend groups and, you know, I ended up uh, pledging Kappa Alpha Psi, you know, so I was part of a fraternity there. Um, but again, you know, still kind of similar as far as the way people would describe me, you know, so never the talkative one in the group, never the loudest in the room or anything like that. Um, so uh, graduated college, uh, interviewed for a few engineering positions. Uh, my first role was at a defense contractor uh, in the Fort Worth area. Um, and so again, you know, so now at this point, I'm now, uh, you know, 22 years old, just left school um, and really just didn't have the confidence as far as, you know, being in these engineering meetings and speaking up and speaking my mind right. and giving presentations and doing these things, right? Um, a lot of that, um, just the self-confidence and stuff, it still wasn't quite there. And, you know, what ended up happening, to be honest, is I got put in some situations where uh, it was kind of like sink or swim. I was put in some situations where I, I basically had to present. There was no one else to do it. Um, and through some of those experiences, although they, they were very hard and difficult uh, for me, I learned a lot. And so 
um, I was able to just really build up my confidence and a lot as far as public speaking, but it wasn't so much, I would say it was just through the experiences, you know, it was through right. the experiences, it was through child, trial and error. Um, so eventually I got my first leadership role at a, at a separate company. Um, so started as a project engineer there, uh, leading a team of engineers. And then fast forward to now where I'm leading uh, a team of engineers as a functional manager and also as a uh, project lead. So, uh, so, so I say all that to just say that the reason for introvert leader and what really drove me to do it and why I'm passionate about it is because I know that I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only person that has been an introvert and struggled with that and wondered you know, do I have what it takes to be a leader? Do I have what it takes to run a business or to start something? You know, anyone that struggles with that confidence or anything like that, uh, I, I've been there. And so that that's really what the platform is about. Um, and, and I'm loving it. You know, I, I, I did my first post at the end of November last year. So it's, it's very new. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'm loving it. So. Wow, wow. Well, I appreciate you. It spoke to me uh, loudly when I, when I first came across it, so I appreciate it. It's ironic that um, we have so many similarities. I, I didn't know this, actually. Uh, but the, the incident that happened at 13, it kind of resembles an incident that happened to me in the third grade. And I, I used to think over the years, like, why, why am I like this, just into myself? And I didn't struggle with shyness or self-esteem. I just like being to myself. And I'm a deep thinker and I'm just like gathering my thoughts and then I'll yep. execute. And I, I was like, well, I, I think in the third grade, I had a teacher and I used to be a, a guy or a kid that asked a lot of questions. And this one teacher, I won't say her name, but I do know her name. Um, one day she said, you know, you're, you're a pain in the ass. And I was just asking a question i wasn't being mischievous or i wasn't right. a kid that acted up i just asked a lot of questions i, I wanted to know a lot and uh, i was into science and, and stuff like that so i was inquisitive and she said that and i uh, went home and, and told my mom and my mom didn't do anything and i think from that point i became more resourceful and went and did I'm a good researcher. I'm very resourceful. I know how to find things. I've told people in the interview, in interviews, I don't have all the answers, but I know how to get all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and yeah. I believe that. Um, so I think it started then. And that could be a hindrance also, because at times I do need help, or you know, I do need to ask that person or someone for help. And I want, and it prolongs it and I'm doing my research and, and time is flying by. So it could be a hindrance also. So yeah, I, I definitely relate to that. I'm also in IT. I've been in IT okay, uh, okay. Yeah, for over, over 25 years now, uh, last six years in project management. Uh, three years before that, I was a BA. And uh, quite a few years before that, I was in the networking side, network admin. Gotcha. So I, I, I get it, uh, leading yeah. teams and, uh, you know, me and my wife, we we laugh about it. She's like, I can't believe you even you even doing this this YouTube thing. It, it's so far away from you know who you are. But um, I think me pursuing my purpose outweighs uh, the introvert in me. So I'll I'm awesome. determined, yeah, to overcome anything I have that may stop me from reaching the people. So yeah, I uh, I totally uh, relate to you. So um, what, what was it one thing that, that propelled you to say or motivated you to say, hey, I need to create this brand and, and really put this out here in the public? You know, that's a, that's a, great, um, that's a great question, man. I would say that, um, you know, it was just a, a feeling uh, that I've had. Like, you know, there's people talk about purpose and they talk about, you know, like, what are you supposed to be doing? And uh how do you know something is your purpose and i feel like with me it, this has been uh in work and in the back of my mind for several years i mean I, I can go back as far as you know four or five years ago when i started leading teams and started to really um you know and a lot of the programs i've worked on 
you know, it, it's high pressure. It's, you know, a, a lot at stake, you know, aggressive deliveries, things that have to be done. And um, a lot of those lessons I was learning on the fly, you know, I, I told myself back then, I said, I didn't think I could do this and I'm doing it, you know, like I, I bet there's other people out there that um, may have struggled with the same things I struggled with, you know, um, so, so I think that was when the seed was planted, I would say about four or five years ago. Um, but I didn't really know what that meant at the time. I didn't know exactly what that was going to turn into. And I think that, you know, fast forward to last year, that was really when the concept for the platform started to really come to me. Um, and, you know, uh, one thing I would say for people, a lot of people will wait until they have all the answers and they have everything figured out before they get started. Um, to be totally honest, uh, that first post I made uh, in November, um, I didn't have everything figured out. But what I did know is that I had something to get out to the world and I had something to say. And I knew that, like I said, there were people out there like me. So uh, I decided to start. Um, I do have a lot of things lined up for the rest of this year that I'm looking forward to and, you know, providing more value. But uh, yeah, it, it wasn't really a set thing. Uh, it's been on my mind for a while and just decided to uh, get it out there. Wow, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Now, I was telling uh, a couple of friends last night, I got this interview with this, with this gentleman. He has his brand, <laughs> the introvert leader. And, and, and one young lady, she, she's going to see this probably, but hey, she asked it. She's like, well, so what's an introvert again? So for the people that don't, don't know, I explained it to her, but for the people that don't know, what, what, what is an introvert and what is an extrovert? Yeah, that's, a, that's another good question. I mean, so, so to be honest, I, I think that uh, a lot of people have misconceptions about both. I, I really do, you know, because in my mind, well, I guess, so to answer the question first, so introvert. So most people would say that personality traits of an introvert are a little more reserved. Um, typically an introvert, if there's a group of people in a room um, and, you know, there are more extroverted people there, the introvert is going to typically shy away and they may not necessarily say as much. Uh, introverts tend to be, uh, just like you said earlier, deep thinkers, because a lot of times introverts can uh, be by themselves and be perfectly okay with that. And a lot of times um, it's perceived as um, being shy or too quiet or things like that, but it may just be that there's just a lot going on in their heads. Um, I, I know I'm like that, you know, like I can be just at the house with a good book or I can be at the house, you know, uh, just thinking, you know, like I don't necessarily <laughs> have to be around people. Um, whereas with an extrovert, it's kind of the opposite. You know, extroverts, um, especially most of my friends, because what's interesting is a lot of my friends are extroverts. A lot of people that, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's an interesting dynamic. Right. Um, where for them, they feed off, they feed energy off of being around people. Yeah. Like for them to not be, in, be around people is awkward. Right. So they actually right. want to be in groups, they want to be at parties, you know, they want to do that. Um, and then introverts is kind of the opposite. And then, you know, there's even um, some people with kind of a mixture, right? So, I mean, I would say that for me, when I'm around people I'm comfortable with, I'm probably more extroverted, mm -hmm. you know? Like I have a certain group of people that, um, and, it's, and it's a very small circle, right? It's not a lot, but it's certain Correct. people that I'm very comfortable, I've known for a long time. And we can talk, we can talk for hours, you know? Right. I mean, we could talk about all kind of things. So I think there's a lot of layers to it. It's, it's a complex question. A lot of people just kind of put introverts in this box. And I just feel like there's so much more uh, to us than that. Right, right. I think, uh, yeah, you hit on something re really poignant. I think a lot of us are are hybrids, but we may have more, so more, more, more of the personality of one or the other. Uh, like you said, I have a small group of friends and uh, if you see me with them, you may not think I'm an introvert if you, <laughs> you're looking from the outside, but they know, and, and they know if we're out, hey, don't, don't invite any new people to the table like that I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like that. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's just me, right? So, um, but yeah, and, and I think um, it's funny you said your friends are extroverts, most of them. I was thinking over that. I was like, why are most of my friends extroverts? It, my wife is an extrovert. And I think um, we're drawn to each other 
because I think we bring them stability, uh, some even ground, and uh, they bring us maybe some wrinkles or some life to to our life. Because uh, right. I, I I I could I could pretty much gonna live like a boring life, and I'm good with it. <laughs> you know, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm totally good, you know, living my life like it is. But I do need to get out more and experience some new things and new people and, and new personalities. And so, you know, she brings that to me and my, my extrovert friends bring that. So leader, introvert leader. Wow, that's um, that's something I thought about. My wife and I have had conversations over. And um, I'm going to get your take on this. Because she would complain to me about different managers she had at her job. Now she's been at her job about 15 years, and she would complain. And 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 one guy sticks out of my head. She said he would not um, interact with the team. He would go in his office, shut the door, and he would only interact when it was when he needed them to do something or to relay a message. Yeah. So leading up to this meeting with you, this interview with you, he crossed my mind. And I was like, you know what? This guy is probably an introvert. And you, 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 his team thinks he's aloof or not interested. He's probably uncomfortable, you yeah. know? And um, I was like, man, I had, I, I never met the guy, but instantly I had compassion for him. I was like, man, this guy, you, you know, tell him what this guy's going through. Like, and he knows that he needs to be out there interacting. I, I know he knows this, but right. he's so uncomfortable probably. Like, how do you mesh those two worlds, being a leader and being an introvert? Because it seems like they bump heads. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, that's one of the things... Um, one of the things that I'm trying to get across with the platform and also with some of the things I'll be, you know, uh, getting out this year is that um, you can become a, a leader in, in certain aspects and you can build on things, but it doesn't mean you have to uh, change being an introvert. So like, you know, a lot of people, there's this misconception. It's like, okay, I'm an introvert now in order to become a leader, I need to get out of my introversion. Like I need to become more of an extrovert. So like in the example you gave, that, that's a great example, great example. Cause you know, uh, one of my first uh, engineering roles, uh, I had this rotation on this team. I actually said this in a video. And when I first got onto the team, it was this one guy that would ask me to go to lunch with uh, this group of guys. And he would ask every day. I mean, I'm like every day, right around 11 o'clock, hey, Terrence, you know, me and the guys are gonna go have some lunch. You wanna come with us? And I'm like, nah, I'm okay, nah, I'm good. And I would just have lunch by myself, right? Um, and this went on for a while and I just would never go because I just wanted to be by myself, you know? So when you said said that about, uh, you know, that guy kind of reminded me of that. Um, but what I, what I would say is as far as meshing the worlds, I did have to learn that there is power in networking. Um, there is power in, uh, as an introvert, finding that happy medium between, okay, I do need to uh, socialize and have a certain network and, you know, have people that uh, I'm comfortable with, they're comfortable with me, we have a good working relationship. But at the same time, do I have to go to every outing with them? Do I have to be around them all the time? Do I have to constantly be talking? Do I have to become an extrovert? No, I don't necessarily have to do that, but I just have to learn how to mesh those worlds of, okay, I don't want to be the person that's never interacting with my team because if we're going to have a solid team, and we're going to be making progress together. We have to have a good relationship, right? And relationship does come from some level of, of, of interaction. So, um, so it's really finding that happy medium, right? It's like, it's not that you have to become an extrovert, but it is that, you know, you just have to figure out what that good medium is for you. So uh, no doubt, no that's, doubt. that's what's worked for me. In the way I do it. No doubt. And I'll let the people know, uh, if you're an introvert, do not try to become an extrovert. You will be <laughs> figured out <laughs> instantly. You'll look crazy. You would totally look crazy. <laughs> I, I, so, so I'm gonna be honest, I, I've done that. I, I made that mistake. Uh, there was a point, you know, and, and not even so much at work, more like socially, 
right. like out with friends and stuff like that. And, you know, they might be like loud or whatever like that. And I would try to come off a certain way. And that, and that wasn't me. Right. That wasn't me, you know, and it just, it doesn't come off authentic. It comes off as fake. And um, I'm at a point in my life now, I accept who I am. I accept, you know, where I'm at. Um, so yeah, you, you'll definitely be found out. There's no reason to try to pretend or anything right. like that. Right, right. So I got a few questions for you. Um, what are some ways introverts can be discovered or seen? You know, we can get lost in the crowd, but you know, and we know the, the saying, the squeaky wheel gets the attention. <laughs> no offense extroverts, but you know, we're not seen like that. So how can we be seen, be discovered, seen, uh, get the attention we need to elevate or grow with, within this world? Wow, okay, that's, that's a good one. So um, again, I think it's back to authenticity. So, you know, being, uh, being yourself. So, so, okay, here's an example. So like if, um, and I'm just thinking of this off the fly, but you know, if there's a room of people, right? And that room of people, you know, they're, they're discussing some idea, some business idea or concept, right? And let's say that, you know, nine of the people in that room are super extroverted. They're talking a lot. They're, they're the ones kind of dominating the conversation, right? Well, that one introvert that's there, they might have, they might have some idea or something in their head that would blow away anything the other nine people are talking about. Um, but I think that one advantage that introverts have, and this is something that I think is key, is because introverts are not always the ones talking the most, we get to observe a lot more. I think a lot of people, and again, no offense to extroverts, anything like that, but because they're spending so much time talking, they're not really listening and they're not observing, right? So to the question of how does an introvert get seen, I think you look for those pockets where you can add value, right? But at the same time, you be authentic with it. So like, you know, the example of that room, um, that one introvert that's sitting there, they're observing the whole situation. They're hearing the conversations. They're listening. They're, they're seeing like, okay, what is the problem that needs to be solved? Okay, these nine people think this. Well, I think this, right? And then when the time is right, you interject that opinion, you interject that thought. And a lot of times, and I've seen this, I've seen this a lot uh, in my industry, where there will be somebody in a meeting, it's a room of 20 or 30 people, and there will be a few people that haven't said anything the whole meeting, right? And then an hour into the meeting, they say something, and everyone is like, wow, uh, we never right. thought of that, <laughs> you know? Right. Well, that. Because that person is introverted, that person's introverted, and what they were doing is they were sitting there thinking, they were sitting there listening to everything everybody was saying, and then boom, they come with this amazing idea, right? So as far as how introverts can be seen, I think it's, again, we, we don't have to be extroverts. We don't have to be something we're not. We can use our power of the fact we're natural listeners. We observe things, right? Um, and then when the moment is right, we, we add that value. Um, and, and then also I will say that just uh, having courage, yes. um, having courage, you know, like if we have an idea or something to put out there to the world, um, just doing it, jumping out there and doing it. And it can be intimidating. Um, yeah. Before I posted my first video that I posted on Introvert Leader, I probably looked at that video 80 times before I posted it. I was picking it apart. I was overthinking it. Right. Um, you know, but just being willing to put ourselves out there. I think that's how we can be seen. Wow, that's that's powerful. Uh, I want to kind of switch gears a little bit. And I uh, I want to touch on, um, and this has a couple of layers to it, uh, dating. So um, there's two parts to this. So dating as a teenage boy, teenage introvert boy, right? So you got the component of high school, uh, peer pressure. Uh, man, you know, you just, um, the extroverts in school get most of the attention, right? So it can kind of be hard for an introverted teenage kid to, to date or meet girls. Uh, maybe, maybe some grown men deal with that too. I, I don't know, you know, I, 
I don't know. So I've, I've dealt with a lot of those issues at, at a younger age. Um, and I'll tell you how, after I get your take on, what are some tips that young introverted men can dive into that dating scene? Because I know they want to meet, you know, whatever they're into, the same sex, opposite sex, whatever. Uh, but being introverted, hey man, they, you know, you don't you don't really draw that attention like that sometimes. True. Now nah, that yeah, no, nah, that's that's a good that's a good point, man. I mean, I think, uh, and it, it's going to sound like I'm maybe repeating, you know, same thing. But again, I, I think uh, the, the authenticity, uh, being yourself, because um, you know, so I've seen that too, right? I've seen where guys, you know, they're trying to get you know, the girl's attention, right? And so they'll act a certain way or they'll, you know, be saying certain things that that's really not them to, to get that attention. Right. Um, and then at the end of the day too, if uh, just being real, I mean, I, I think that when you attract a certain uh, person, if you weren't being yourself in the beginning, then that's gonna come out anyway. And really you don't wanna be with somebody that's with you and then not there for the real you. Does that make sense? So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it's kind of like, um, and I, and that's that's probably not the, the best answer for the question, I guess. But you know, the the main thing I think is being yourself, being authentic. Um, there's just no there's no way around that. You know, right. I, I think that's the best way to deal with it. But uh, right. and you know, and in high school it's tough. In high school it's tough because I'm because as, as you asked me that, I was thinking back to when I was in high school. I was thinking back to the mentality um, and how things are, and it does feel sometimes like the more extroverted guys are getting the girls, getting the shine or, or whatever. Um, but what I do know happens is over time, a lot of times, you know, it may not necessarily be that way. Right. right? I agree. Because, you know, circumstances in life change, things change. So, you know, there, there's that too. Right. Right. I, I think back on, on when I was young and I was like, man, if I, uh, if I didn't excel in sports and basketball, I don't know if I would have gotten seen, you know, I don't know. Um, so, you know, I would suggest to, to young guys to um, find your gift. Uh, if it's writing, acting, public speaking, um, a debate team, a sports, whatever it is, focus on that. And that's going to be the thing that draws light to you. And so, but if you're not focusing on your purpose or, or your gifts and nobody knows, you know, what, how talented or gifted you are, you know, that light is not going to be drawn to you. So, so we, we've got that in common too. So I, I played basketball in uh, middle school, high school. And I would say as an introvert, that was one of the things that, you know, kind of helped me be seen. Right. right. So it's why I agree with you hundred percent. You know, yeah. that, that does make a difference. No doubt. Now we, we touched on that now. I don't know if this is a thing. I look over my, my own parenting. Um, parenting as an introvert. <laughs> you know, I like to, um, my, my wife says I, I preach, I teach. So I like to uh, have one-on-ones. I'm not the kind of father to, uh, to embarrass you or call you out because I don't want to be done like that, right? So I do a lot of one-on-ones and I excel in that in my mentoring. I don't want to mentor a group of people. You know, I, I will if I have to, but I rather do one-on-ones. Um, so have you faced any any struggles, any challenges as an introvert parent? As an introvert parent, that's that's an interesting question. Um, so my, my two kids are very different. They're, they're very different. Um, my son is five and daughter is two, going to be three in February. Um, I have to have different styles with each one. Uh, I'll say that. Um, I think that with my son, I actually have to be a lot more, um, he, he's, he's pretty sensitive, just the way that he's wired. Mm -hmm. And so I have to come at him a certain kind of way. Um, my daughter is, she's, I don't know, she, she's two going on 20. Like she's just, she's different. You know right, I mean? Right. She goes to the park, she's jumping off of the highest thing, you know, she'll just take off. I mean, 
So she's like a firecracker, you know? Um, and so as an introvert, like me dealing with her, like it, it's, it's different, you know, like I think my son, you know, he's a little more like calm, a little more relaxed. He, he's, he's an active boy. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he right, loves right. soccer, basketball, all that. Um, but it's a different dynamic with him. I think with my daughter, I'm learning that, you know, she's definitely, I can already see it. She's going to be extroverted like times, you know, a thousand. Um, and so I think just, you know, um, finding that good balance with her where, you know, I let her, I mean, she's, you know, not getting full sentences out, but she's kind of talking, you know, so I let her talk, I let her do her thing. Um, so no, I wouldn't really say struggles. I would just say more so that um, I've just had to learn how to balance those different personalities between the two of them. I think when they get older, that's when I'll start to probably see a little more of their personalities even more. And, uh, and I'll see how my introversion plays in with that, so. Okay. Now, you, we, um, you, I was going to ask you, what are some misconceptions about introverts? But you, you, dived, you dove into that early, so I won't, I won't do that. But I know for myself, I can be um, aggravated or annoyed by extroverts, <laughs> you know, especially if they're not my, my friends, right? I hadn't built that trust with them. I could be annoyed, and I had to watch that. You know, I was like, man, um, really being judgmental. And, uh, you know, so I, I really have to watch that. And uh, sometimes, well, in the past, I would um, subconsciously think I was smarter than the extrovert because they were so loud and I consider myself a deep thinker. And that's being judgmental. So that's not that's not good. So, I mean, other than that, what are some things you think we need to watch out for? Well, that's a good one right there because um, I, I struggle with that too. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, that, that kind of, you know, when I'm in rooms and like everyone is talking, everyone's just going back and forth, going back and forth, like you can find yourself, I think it's, at times as an introvert where you're just kind of sitting there and you're just kind of watching the show. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I know I've been at different dinner parties and stuff, and there's all these different conversations going on and all. And you just kind of sitting there. Um, and yeah, I mean, you, you can be judgmental. I, I think that's a really good point. I, I've done that. You know, I, I'm kind of sitting there like listening to what the, the people are talking about. And I'm thinking about something to me that's on a whole other level. Right. You know? right. Um, but I think what's interesting is if you flip it and put yourself in their shoes, because I've had this conversation with some of my friends. It's like, to them, they'll look at someone like a me or you that's sitting at that same table. And to them, it's like, oh, they're just quiet. Oh, they're just shy. They're just this or they're just that, right? right. Um, so we kind of both have misconceptions about each other. Right. You know? Like we might be sitting there um, listening to everything that's being said, you know? But I would say as far as what to watch out for, because that was your question, um, I think that we should take opportunities to add value. Mm -hmm. So there have been times where I'm sitting somewhere, you know, same scenario, dinner party or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's all these people talking, all these things being said. And I might have something to add to the conversation that would add value to the conversation and make people really think about something on a different level. But sometimes I may not say it, you know? I may just sit back and I might just like, ah, I'm good, I'm good today. I'll just let them, you know. But I might have something very important to say. That right. thing that I have to say, that might change their whole outlook on life or about what they're talking about, right? right? So I think one thing we do have to watch out for is that we're not so closed off sometimes that we don't get our thoughts out to the world, you know, that we don't get our feelings out. Again, doesn't mean we have to become extroverts, but it's just right. when we have those opportunities here and there to add value, just being willing to add that value. You know, I wow. think that's I think that's key. That's that is that is key. And um wow, that that resonates with me because I did that recently where there was a there was a I'm a I'm a I'm a member of a few groups uh in business ventures. And so one of these calls last Sunday, these Zoom meetings, they kind of got off topic and started talking uh some political stuff and um and I think differently. So, but I just kept my thoughts to myself. 
And I was like, uh, and, and I think what it is, <laughs> I don't even want the confrontation. It's like, is it is it worth it? Like, you know, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. You know, we hear we hear about business and we're, we're talking about politics now. So it's like, but I do that a lot though. Like if, if I don't feel like it's really worth it, I won't engage. But maybe like you said, I can change a point of view or a thought process. And so maybe I need to step out and do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it, it depends on the situation, you know, like in, you know, you, you gauge the situation and you gauge if you think it's a, uh, think it's worth it and everything like that. But I definitely think that introverts need to be heard more. I'll say that, you know, because a lot of times we have something to add to conversations and, you know, we just don't do it. You right. know, so I, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not big on confrontation either. You know, I don't, uh, I don't enjoy confrontation. Um, right. I, I will say I've got to a point now where I will speak my mind uh, when it comes to something, you know, but right. Um, but, but, you know, I, I pick the situation. I kind of, I, I pick my battles, right? It just depends on kind of what it is. Right, right. Now, we got to dive into this. I didn't want to lead off the interview with this, but it's obvious. We're Black men. <laughs> so I hate to use minority, uh, but I, I, I don't like that word. But uh, we make up a small percentage of the population. Uh, so... We add the component of being an introvert, and then you add the component of wanting to be uh, or pursuing entrepreneurship or uh, a place in corporate America. Man, uh, do you <laughs> do you think that's an uphill battle for us? Because I know for a fact, IT that industry, the corporate America really doesn't fit my personality. I'm really trying to get out of it, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, it's paying the bills and I'm grateful. Uh, make a decent living, so I'm grateful. I'm not complaining, right? But I don't, I'm not good at small talk. Uh, I like substance. I don't, the, the water cooler talk, it's just, it's not me. So I've been in IT, uh, probably 25 years, and me, my wife and I were talking about this, I don't have any friends from that industry. All of my friends are outside of IT. I don't, you know, so, and I can't put that on them. I know it's me. It's just my personality. So what are some tips? I know you said being authentic, but man, we got so many components to that. <laughs> Being in IT, yeah. I rarely see anybody in my department that looks like me. There may be another guy or two, maybe, maybe another uh, a black woman or two, maybe, but the majority are going to be white men and then white women. Mm -hmm. And then black men and, yeah. and, and black women, they kind of even out. They're probably the same numbers. Management, for the most part, has always been white. Uh, Directors white, owners white, but we're in this industry. They they don't look like us, and we're introverts. <laughs> so, any tips? <laughs> Absolute man, great question, great question. Uh, I, I love yeah, I love conversations like this. Um, yeah, so so my industry is very similar, right? Uh, I'm in I'm in the defense industry, so uh, you know I'm now at my fourth uh, defense contractor. So it's primarily government contracts. And, you know, when I look at the organizational chart, I don't see a lot of people that look like me on that chart, right? right. Uh, especially as you go kind of up the ranks, uh, up the ranks there. Um, another thing, and, and you really hit on this, but, you know, when, when we think about, you know, uh, as Black men, um, and then if we think about our culture, right? And so this is another reason I wanted to start this platform, because what I see um, just in the black community and, you know, through different forms of media it's typically when you see black men, they're, um, they're loud. There's a certain, um, a certain aura. There's a certain something. Uh, I mean, everything from the preacher at the church to, uh, different entrepreneurs you see on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Right. right. Um, it's almost like, you know, our culture is drawn to the good talker, the loud right. talker, quote unquote, right? Right. 
So what about the, you know, the black men that aren't like that? What about those of us that have personalities that are where they're not the loudest in the room, right? right. Does that mean they can't be successful? Does that mean they can't excel? And so those are the kind of questions I started to ask myself. And what I'll tell you is in my particular role and, and what I do now, um, one of the things that's, that set me apart, I, I've realized is just my work ethic. I just, I work everybody. That, that's just my, my mentality. Um, and I feel like when you have a certain work ethic that regardless of, you know, that's something you can control. You know, right. I'm, I'm never going to be the loudest in the room. I'm never going to be the one that, you know, uh, you know, uh, goes in a room and just, you know, takes over everything. That's just not my personality. But I do have a way where I maintain control and I do have a way where I'm able to give direction to my team and I do it within my personality type. Right. Right. Um, and just, you know, yeah, so work ethic. I mean, that's one thing you can always control. The other thing that I'll say as well is that uh, entrepreneurship, you know, so you talked about the corporate ladder and how all that is structured. And one of the things I love about just technology and the way things are now is we're in, a, in an age where if we have an idea, we can put it out. You know, <clears throat> if we have a business or something we want to do, we can pursue that. And so being introverts, you know, it really doesn't matter if you have a good idea. If there's a good concept or something you want to put out there, then, you know, we have the power to do that. So no um, instead, of, um, instead of just pursuing the path of trying to go up the corporate ladder and try to play that game, there's always the game of us trying to build for ourselves. No so I'm, uh, I'm big on that. No doubt. Thank you. Thank you for that. Because uh, I always wondered about that. I also struggled with, I wanted to do, I want to do a uh, motivational speaking. <clears throat> but when I look out, I was like, man, who, <laughs> who resembles me? Like the introvert. I just want to sit down and talk to an audience. I don't want, I'm not a rah-rah guy. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> right. I want to have deep discussion. Yep. Maybe at colleges, universities, uh, you know, in, a, in a, that type of forum. But I was like, man, who, who is that black guy that looks like me? I just see the rah-rah motivational speakers. But exactly. I was like, hey, regardless, this is my purpose. I'm going to pursue it. I'll, I'll create my own niche. <laughs> yep. Maybe. Yeah. 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 That was so. So that was that was the million dollar word you said right there was niche. Right. That was exactly uh, that was exactly my mindset. Um, I looked on social media, I looked on TV, and anytime I saw someone that looked like me, they they were the rah rah guy, like you said. So I said, "What is a niche? What is an area where no one is tapping in? What is an area where nobody is covering this?" And I don't see black male introverts on online. I just I just don't see it. To be honest, it's not to say that they're not out there, right? But I feel like just, you know, and then also thinking about like the next generation, like we can be the ones that, you know, they can see themselves in us, you know, because not everyone is going to have the personality of uh, a Les Brown. Like that's, that's someone I really, I, right. I really like Les Brown yeah. um, <clears throat> or like a Bishop P.D. Jakes or like these dynamic speakers, you know, everyone's right. not going to have that personality. So um, I think there's a certain niche in a lane for people like us to uh, be motivational too. No doubt, no doubt. Well, um, hey man, I really enjoyed this conversation. I think it was enlightening. Uh, you opened my eyes up to a few things and I know, like you said, there's a niche, there's a market for this. And I thank you for uh, being obedient to your spirit and following your, and pursuing your purpose because it's needed. And, and uh, you are appreciated brother. Um, before we wrap up, I have this segment. It's called 10 Speed. So I'm going to name 10 names. These are famous introverts. <laughs> and, and I want yeah. you to say the first thing, one word that comes to your head. And we'll okay. just we'll fly through it. All right. And then we'll close out. Steven Spielberg. Mm. Imagination. Barack Obama. 
didn't expect that one. <laughs> Is it, it, yeah, there's a lot I could say on him. I'm trying to boil it down to one word. Um, cool. Abraham Lincoln. Uh, transformative. Elon Musk. Innovative. Rosa Parks. Powerful. Dr. Seuss. I'll say imaginative again. Bill Gates. Uh, world changer. That's two words, but. Yes. Nelson Mandela. Mm. Impactful. Michael Jordan. Dominant. Last one, Terrence Lee. purposeful wow there you go there you go hey i appreciate you mr terrence lee of the introvert leader i appreciate you man many blessings upon you and uh man i hope we we stay in contact and uh any anything i can do for you i'm there uh on your platform and uh yeah i thank you i salute you thank you yeah no i, I appreciate this man this has been great um, you know, and, and I, I salute you for, you know, for creating this platform. I, I, I love having conversations with, um, again, there's not as many of us doing this. So I'm just happy to see you doing what you're doing, man. Any way I can support you, you let me know. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely stay uh, contacted and, uh, and connected. How can the people reach you? So I can be reached on uh, Instagram at the introvert leader. Uh, you follow me at the introvert leader. I'm also on Facebook at the introvert leader. Uh, I will have a lot of things coming throughout the year. So uh, just follow me on social media for uh, all that information and uh, things that are coming up. All right. And now people, I will have his links and social media links or IG link in the description. So yeah, subscribe to uh, yeah, the YouTube channel also, I think I saw. Uh, Correct. Yes. Correct. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Uh, follow him on IG. And uh, yeah, this is a powerful brother. I think we'll hear a lot, of, a lot from him in the years to follow. So thank you, brother. Salute you. Thank you. Hey, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.